Hello again, in this video, we're going to learn other elements, which can be used on the HMI screen. Let's start from the previous video. This is the HMI screen, which has been designed before. Now, to start the motor, I must release the emergency button. As you see, when the motor is on, these three elements show the state. Also, we can change the motor state, with this symbolic I.O. field. Alright, here is a simple point in using symbolic or graphic I.O. field. For example, select this. Here, we can change its mode. Now, it works as input-output. So, this element can read the connected tag state, and also change that. Let me change its mode to output, so, this element will work as an output. Now, this symbolic I.O. field, will show the motor state, not change it. Let's test this screen again. As you see, at this time, we cannot change the motor state with this element. Well, let's see another element. Here is date and time field. At its properties window, we can select which item we need. Time, date, or both of them. This element can get its time, from our system, or a PLC memory. Let me select my system time. Another element is I.O. field. With this element, we can insert and see numbers. First, Let's use an on-delay timer in the PLC program. As you know, this timer need a data block. Finally, I enter 4 second, for its preset time. Now let's move this program to open virtual PLC. We're going to design an HMI screen to see and modify preset time, and elapsed time. Let's insert an I.O. field. At its properties window, let's go to the inserted timer data block, and connect the I.O. field to the preset time. Also, we can determine its number format. Let's insert a text here. Now, let me create a copy to have another text and I.O. field, to show the elapsed time. Well, let me connect this I.O. field, to elapsed time of the inserted timer.
Here I change its mode to output. Because we don't need to change the elapsed time. Let's simulate this screen. As you see, I must hold the start button for 4 seconds to start the motor. Alright, let's change the preset time to 5 second. Let's start the motor. Again, the motor is on after 4 seconds. It seem here is a problem. Alright, when the timer start its work, it gets the preset time, from this constant number, not from the HMI. To solve this problem, let's use a memory here, which the HMI screen can change its value. Well, we cannot use MD0, because the byte 0 is used here. Let's use MD1. OK, transfer this program to the virtual PLC. Also, let's connect the first I.O. field to MD1 memory. Let's simulate the screen again. At this time, the preset time value is zero. Let's change it to five seconds. As you see, we can change the preset time, to any number. Also you can see my system time on the HMI screen. Alright. Let's see the next element, bar, which can be used on the HMI screens. Insert a bar, and also an I.O. field. We want to change an analog output, directly from the HMI. So let's modify the PLC program. Insert a move instruction. Here, let's use a memory, which the HMI can change it, with the last inserted I.O. field.
On the right side, we have an analog output address, which we want to see its value with the inserted bar. Well, let's transfer this program to the virtual PLC. Now, let's connect the inserted elements to PLC addresses. Here, we can change the bar scale. Suppose the entered numbers can be between 0 to 1000. OK, let's simulate this HMI screen. Let me change display format to decimal. As you see, we can change the analog output address, directly from the HMI screen. And also, this bar shows its value. If the entered number is out of the bar range, an arrow will be appeared. All right, we have seen what are basic objects and elements. In the next video, we'll do a practical project, to see how we can design an applicable HMI screen. Thanks.